Scene 80, take one. I'm Lindsay Hollister, and we first came to the Arts District in early 2011. We were looking for a space to put a pie shop. We're one of the few fully functioning pie shops actually in the country. Most people do other things besides pie, like sandwiches and soups and salads that we don't do. We're devoted to pie. We were not restauranteurs. We were just a family that decided to open up a pie shop. You know, my mother-in-law had this lifelong dream to do it. We are lucky enough to be underneath this amazing historic building called the American Hotel. When we first found the space, we were told it isn't a hotel as much as there's people living there full time. So it was unusual to find a space that was part of a hotel. There was quite a bit of renovation to do. It took us from April until October to build out the place because it had sat empty and it had been a Mexican restaurant before us called Icaramba. We had to take down their awning that actually said Icaramba on it. We opened the doors uh, about the second week in October of 2011 and just let the neighborhood like trickle in, you know? And it was great because the locals would walk by all the time and they were like, oh, you're open. Here you are, you know? So they came in and they were excited to sort of see what we were doing behind the scenes for that long period of time. When we found this space, it was very run down. When you walked in, it looked like a cave. It just had dark walls and dark, dark floors. And I am not a do-it-yourself, fixer-upper, I always say HGTV kind of girl. But when we walked in, some people think it sounds crazy, but it felt like home and it felt really right, even though everything looked wrong about the actual space. Being the Arts District, we learned the history. The first event we did before we opened was the Bloomfest. And just these most amazing people kept coming by and they're like, oh, you're gonna be a pie shop, we are so excited. And we felt the love instantly. There is an energy here and I felt it. And I was like, we're so lucky because in the rest of LA, it's so spread out, it's so massive. But down here, People wanted to know what we were doing, and then they were excited about what we were doing. And from that day, they've continued to support us. They followed through on that promise. This neighborhood is our home. I see people every day. They're my family now. The people who work across the street, the people who live here. There's people who come in every single day. I actually was out of the shop for a couple of weeks, and when I came back, everyone kept coming in, and they were like, where have you been? We've missed you, and I've never felt that in my life. Where we used to live, I didn't know our neighbors who lived across the street, and then here, we have a whole community of people. But it's just amazing to see it's the same faces every day. I was living in North Hollywood, and I remember being invited down here for the first time, and I was like, where is this place? I felt like I was in another city because I didn't come downtown. You did not come downtown. People didn't do that. So I do think we capitalized on the beginning of the gentrification. Now, three years later, I'm worried about the continuation of the gentrification. When we found this place, it was a good price. Now, we would have never been able to afford it. One Santa Fe, what they're asking per square footage is astronomical. A mom and pop shop, like we were, funding from our savings accounts, they're not going to be able to afford the new buildings that are coming in here. So we were lucky we got in when we did. It's a catch-22 because the more people that come down here and the more people that discover is great for our business, but now as a resident, I'm feeling very selfish. <laughs> What I'm most afraid of are the commercial businesses. When it starts to become stores and shops you can find anywhere else. When you come down here, you're not finding a Sephora or a Disney store. One resident said to us, you didn't try to make the neighborhood fit to you. You fit into the neighborhood, which was really nice because we would never try to force a business into a neighborhood where it doesn't fit. And I do see that now. You're gonna have multi-millionaires see dollar signs and just shove stores and shops and bars and restaurants that don't belong here. This neighborhood is so beautiful and rich and unique. You will take away the uniqueness by putting in commercial, well-known brands. This is our home. We have been successful since the first day we opened. And that's so rare for a restaurant. Such a huge part of that is this neighborhood and also the people that have supported us. We can't imagine not being here. We will open other locations. We have opened a location in Pasadena, but we always talk about this is the mothership, this is the home.
We have a tendency in this country to tear down history. For America, 108 years old is, is old. We've dealt with the issues of having an old building. Bad plumbing. We've had some plumbing issues and you start to see the, the little wears and tears, but if we could change our mind as Americans into preservation instead of demolishing things, this country would be a lot more beautiful. What makes downtown so amazing is seeing the history, the art deco, the texture. There's just so much to look at. I have lived in Los Angeles for almost 14 years and have never loved it as much as I do living down here. You can walk out of dinner and look up and see this gargoyles. You know, that's so cool. I don't want to see that go away. But the people who own buildings are not the artists. <laughs> I hope that the person who owns the building loves it enough to keep it how it is. It makes the updates that it needs to have, but definitely doesn't tear it down. I mean, we want to be here for a really long time. Okay.